Welcome to The Deciding Point, presented by Hard True, our Crack Rackets weekly breakdown of the biggest storylines from throughout the tennis world. This week, we answer the question on the minds of every tennis fan. Which players are going to emerge from Wimbledon with the titles, the 2021 event just around the corner? We only had three weeks of grass court warm-up events to get acclimated to the surface, but on today's podcast, I want to focus on that question, who are going to emerge with the titles, talk a little bit about the Olympic Games on the horizon as well. With that in mind, Westoff, roll the credits. Let's get to today's show. Some history was made this past week on the WTA Tour as we had two first-time champions emerge in our two grass court warm-up events. Let's start in Birmingham with Own Jabour. Jabour becomes the first Arab woman in WTA history to capture a women's singles title. Feels like it was a long time coming for Jabour. She had made a couple of finals over these past 52 weeks, is now 41-17 in in her last 52 weeks. She's up to number 24 in the actual rankings. That's a career high for her, and certainly she belongs in the top 25 conversation, but you take a deeper dive into the numbers she's put up over these past 52 weeks. Perhaps that number 24 ranking is selling her short. You look at Tennis Abstract's ELO ratings, which measures who you play, how you do against them, as opposed to where and when, what round, like the WTA rankings do. Jabour's numbers pop off the screen. She's up to number 15 in overall ELO rating, you narrow it out to grass court specific results against small sample size, but she's all the way up to number four in Tennis Abstract's ELO rating. She's also number eight in her 2021 specific results. You look at what she's been able to do, 29-11 and 11 here in 2021. She's made six quarterfinals since the tour resumed in August. Those are spectacular results. And then you look at the more specific statistics. She becomes the fourth member of the top 15 club. When you're a top 15 player in both hold percentage, how frequently you're holding serve, break percentage, how frequently you're breaking serve amongst top 50 players, usually you're doing something right. Usually you're winning big titles, competing late into second weeks at Grand Slams. You look for Own Jabour. She joins a list that includes Iga Sviantek, Garbine Muguruza, and Arena Sabalenka. It feels like a list she belongs on, again, given that continued success she's had over the last 52 weeks. And have we seen Owns make a semifinal, a final, a winning run at a Grand Slam yet? The obvious answer there is no. But when you look at how open these events have been over the past three seasons on the WTA side, we just saw Krejcikova do it at the French Open. And there are still so many questions about the health of so many of the usual contenders, people like Ashley Barty, Garbine. Muguruza, Simona Halep. We don't know how healthy they're going to be entering this 2021 Wimbledon. We're obviously not going to be seeing Naomi Osaka either as she withdrew for the event. Given Own Jabour's level of play over these past, really, again, 52 weeks of competition, given the fact that she's 17 and 10 overall in her career in grass court matches, and that 27 matches of experience in WTA level grass court play, that makes a difference compared to so many of the young players who have played fewer than 10. Again, people like Andrescu, people like Igor Sviantek, they really haven't played that many matches on these grass courts. So it's going to be players like a Jabour or like a Belinda Bencic, people who just have experience on the surface, that's something you might be looking for as you try to figure out who the top Wimbledon contenders are. Certainly, again, you look at Own Jabour with her title run this past week in Birmingham, knocking off Kasakina, Potapova, Heather Watson, Layla Fernandez. She looked exceptional all week long. The variety she plays with her ability to attack open space, her ability to incorporate the drop shot, and then again, her ability to hold, serve, eat, with ease and pressure all of her opponent's service games. She's a complete player, and it shouldn't surprise anyone to see her in the top 25. Shouldn't surprise anyone to see her make a run into the second week of this 2021 Wimbledon. Own Jabour, someone I am certainly keeping my eye on, and again, a much-deserved first WTA-level singles title for her. On the flip side, you look at our warm-up event last week in Germany. Has there been a more impressive title run in this 2021 season than Ludmilla Samsonova, the 22-year-old Russian, earning her first 
WTA title in Germany this past week. You look at the players she knocked off on her way to the title. She gets wins over Von Drusova, Kudermatova, an in four Madison Keys, Victoria Azarenka, and then Belinda Bencic in a three set final that saw her drop the first set 6 1 in about 25 minutes. I mean, for Samsonova, the first thing that jumps off is the screen is her power, and she uses her length so well on these grass courts. She's about five foot eleven, and her ability to turn into that backhand really, really special, particularly on the return of serve for Benchich, who struggled in the second set with her first serve percentage, and then took a little bit off her first serve in the third just to put a little bit more pressure on Samsonova, but it didn't matter because Samsonova was teeing off on the ball, hitting through everything, uh, really finding some success on these grass courts. And look, she's definitely got a bigger forehand swing, but when she, you know, with her first serve and the time it gives her to set up that forehand, she's able to swing through it and uh, just attack these opponents, play on her terms. And again, you look at the win she was able to accomplish, you say, fine, the Azarenka wins a fluke. Well, when you follow it up with a win over a Benchich, when you beat a Keys, when you beat an inform form Matova, the pressure of Amarketa Van Drusova. Those are exceptional wins for Samsonova, who now finds herself at a new career high of number 63. And for the 22-year-old, it's been steady progress. She's played a ton of pro events dating back to when she was 14, 15 years old. And she's been hovering, you know, top 150 end of 2019, top 120 end of 2020. She's now inside the top 75. She's got top 75 weapons, top 75 power. Again, it's a really small sample size. There's a lot of qualifying action in these results. She is 12 and 3 now on grass courts was, you know, earned 7 wins as she came through qualifying last week, but you know, was 5 and 3 on the surface before and the quicker surface allows her to play her power tennis. I certainly want, wouldn't want to line up against her if I was a seed or in the early rounds of this Wimbledon event. Now, again, after you play the best tennis of your life for a week, following that up is so difficult to do. Only the special ones end up doing it, but you watch the power tennis of Samson over there. Certainly a place for her in the top 100. Again, only 22 years old. We've all grown so fascinated with the 19, 20, 21 year olds, or even the 16, 17 year olds like Coco Golf who break through so early. Samsonova can do it. And she's got that power tennis. She's got the confidence now as well. Again, I would want no power of her on these fast courts on the grass. Is she going to be on my top 10 contenders to win Wimbledon like an own Jabour might be? No. But watching Samsonova power through that draw, super, super impressive. Again, shout out to Belinda Bencic. She gets a much needed final and the best surface in her career has consistently been grass court. She's made the round of 16 at Wimbledon before. I think she can do it again this season. V if she's healthy, looks in form as well. Madison Keys, the speed of these courts seem to play perfectly for her. There was a lot to take note of in the warm-up event last week in Germany. Certainly most of all would be the fact that it was Ludmilla Samsonova earning the title and capping off again. Two more first-time winners on the WTA Tour. That means we've had 10 thus far on the season. You look at the list of names that have done it. Clara Tossin, Sarah Suribas Tormo, Leila Fernandez, Veronica Kudermatova, Astra Sharma, Maria Sorio Serrano, Bala Bedosha Jaber, Barbara Krechikova, On Jabor, Ludmilla Samsonova. A generational shift is occurring. The majority of those players, 25 years old or younger, actually most of them under the age of 22. It's happening in front of our eyes, folks. It's manifesting itself at the Grand Slams. It is such an exciting time to be a fan of women's tennis.